with a picture of Obama with the Secret Service. If you will tweet the article that has the video and the audio of Matt Drudge, Matt Drudge challenges Obama, give up your guns. News icon calls on President and Hillary to relinquish Secret Service protection. People are like, well, that's ridiculous. He needs to be protected. Okay, well, this is discriminatory. We pay for him to be protected because he's a god. He's an emperor. Well, we don't have the right to defend ourselves. Even though nowhere in jurisprudence, nowhere in law, in our system, does it say the police have a duty to protect you. They have a duty to respond to the courts and to the people, to grand juries, to judges, to go out and to grab people who have been suspected of committing a crime or who have been indicted. So we don't have to protect you. We can't protect you all the time, most of the time. They'll tell you that. But you can't have a gun. It's not police that are saying that on average. It's the criminal class who are protected by our taxpayer money that have the nerve to do this. And I know you know this, but the general public, the yuppies, the trendies, they don't know this. You've got to reach out to these poor victims of brainwashing. Should I play the attorney general again? Saying to the media, the RTF National Convention, the, the, the former attorney general, Eric Holder, saying we need to literally, repetitively brainwash the public against guns. You know, I'm not going to play that. I want to get Dent's take on the move towards totalitarianism, and then I'll get into the news. But since I mentioned it, here is Obama again over the weekend saying it's a conspiracy theory to think he wants our guns. When I have the CNN clip and others where they're calling for banning them, and he's saying we should go the Australian route, which is banning everything but single-shot bolt action if you get a special farm permit. The politics has to change, and the people who are troubled by this have to be as intense and as organized and as adamant about this issue as folks on the other side who are absolutists and think that any gun safety measures are somehow an assault on freedom or communistic or a plot by me to you know, take over and stay in power for ever or something. I mean, there are all kinds of crackpot conspiracy theories that float around there. Some of which, by the way, are ratified uh, by elected officials in the other party on occasion. So basically he's saying you're a conspiracy theory crackpot and ratifying these theories. You know, he is going to graduate up to the Secretary Generalship of the UN or the head of one of these big mega banks. That's what he says he wants to do. That's what Tony Blair has gone on to do. That's what Clinton's gone on to do. That's what Clinton has said he wants as a Secretary Generalship, but he's too sick. Obama can now get globally a lot of these Muslim countries to vote for him. That's over a billion people right there. He can get all the liberals in Europe to vote for him. This is about global government. He doesn't want to be the president of America indefinitely. He wants to go on and dominate and control. Going back to our guest, Harry Dent of HarryDent.com. Harry, looking at this, um, the points I just made, earlier I made a statement about they want us to pay for people's sex changes or basically they want us to pay for you know, dumping Drano in their eyes. Um, I don't know if you know about this, but that's mainstream television. I, I never played the whole clip for the audience. They, they actually say in the newscast, it's wonderful that she poured Drano in her eyes to be blind like others, as if it's bad that we have sight and blind folks don't. Uh, so then you know, we have to ban he or she or mother or father or boy or girl because it hurts folks that don't identify as that. I don't know if you were aware of that, pouring drain cleaner in your eyes. The next trendy social justice movement from Bancroft Television, that's up on Infowars.com, linking to mainstream news. I, I mean... What is this mass mental illness? And I, and I think that segues into uh, some final statements from you. What do you think about the culture itself? I mean, have we ever had an irrevocably damaged population like this that's truly, I mean, not the majority, but a large minority of people uh, that are of every race, color, and creed that literally have been artificially made mentally ill by the false reality of trendyism, uh, political correctness, whatever it is. I mean, it's now a major movement, the trans abled to pay to have people's arms and legs hacked off, and then we pay for them for life to live in wheelchairs. Uh, they're not playing games. Will we be conquered by people pouring Drano in their eyes? 
Well, I, I don't know about that one. What I see, Alex, is I've never seen this society, this country, so polarized um, where people can't agree on anything and Congress can't agree on anything because this boom has been so uneven. It's been so rigged with special interest and 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 uh, low cost money that favors certain sectors like Wall Street and stuff that that you know those people have done extremely well and people who have done nothing but fallen behind and those two people can't see the world the same way and that really sets up. To sure, me, but what, here's my question because because uh, listen, I'm not trying to be absurd here. Uh, you probably haven't. Seen, there's. Have you heard about the transabled movement and, and the gender bathrooms? And I know you'll get into these politics, but I mean, this is a political assault by the establishment. This is their response to make us so dependent, Clower and Piven, so mentally ill that we don't know which way is up. I mean, that's a real trend. So I'm saying, what's the master plan in your view? You just answered the pub question. It, it, you know, absolutely on target in my view, and it actually taught me something. So I'm saying this is a plan in Europe and here to turn the public into a bunch of dysfunctional mental illness factories. What is the point of that? Obviously, it's been allowed by all this free money. What do these people do that uh, once things collapse, do we just let them starve in the streets? Because if not, they're going to come after us like a giant school of piranha. Well, you know, the thing is you can't change. All of this is, is much bigger than any of us. We can't change this. this. This is an inevitable crisis that has to happen after years and years of preventing it, which only makes it worse. It's like drinking more and more not to come down from the high or something. Or the yeah, it's like so, feeding 50 grizzly bears in your backyard. And then one day, one, you know, it's going to kill you. Yeah, all you can do is control your own circumstance. If you get out of these risky assets, stocks and real estate and stuff now, you're going to preserve your gains and everybody else is going to see them just disappear overnight like in the Great Depression. Where you live is important. I don't own any more real estate except for a place in the Caribbean because that's my getaway place if things get very bad. If people have a choice of living on the outskirts of a major city or downtown, pick the outskirts. If you're living in the middle of the country between the two big mountain ranges, the Rockies and Alleghenies, you're going to be much better off than people are in highly dense, highly bubbly coastal cities that are going to crash the most and have the most foreclosures. Yeah, Texas' biggest problem is Houston. That is a time bomb. Yeah. And, then, you know, last time we had a real estate crash, Texas was not hit. They didn't bubble up. But because of this fracking bubble and some other things, Texas did have more of a bubble this time. So Texas is going to have higher unemployment when all these fracking jobs disappear. Higher crime. Real estate's going to go down. So, so you just have to protect yourself and say, look, what can I do to be safe? What, what can I do to survive? And how do I preserve as much wealth as I can and make it safe and liquid? You don't, you want to have it in very state, safe stuff. You don't want it to have, be sitting in a bank account where they can loan against it and say, oops, I'm sorry, we lost the money. You don't have it. It has to be in your own investment account and you have to be in safe short term bonds and even long term sure. treasury bonds and, and, and the best corporate bonds. Those are the only two things that did well in the Great Depression. Real estate, commodities, stocks all did horrible for a decade. What about what I mentioned before the break, the accelerated move towards totalitarianism? A, do you agree that's happening around the world? And B, well, do you think it'll be successful for the establishment? Well, I think you're going to get both. The establishment's going to lose a lot of uh, confidence, especially the Federal Reserve. But yes, when things get bad and, and when crime goes up and more people are unemployed and there's more social unrest, there's going to be attempts to kind of control things and make things okay. So I think you're going to see disintegration and more kind of top-down control at the same time. In the end, I think the disintegration is going to win. Well, this elite is so corrupt and so decadent, disintegration is better than total enslavement. It is, it is. Now, I'm pulling for the disintegration. I'm pulling for everybody facing reality and realize we can't stimulate the economy forever. We can't get something for nothing. We can't work for 40 years and then, and then be on the dole for health care and Social Security for 22 years now that our life expectancy has gone up 10 years in the last several decades. We're so out of reality in so many things that a crisis is the only way to fix it. Special interests control everything. You can't deal with that. Every special interest will fight you. But when the system breaks down, they're going to lose their power as well. So I, I think this is, again, a necessary and an inevitable crisis. The and that's why I agree. Right and, and that's why they're scurrying around trying to put bigger institutions in power in uh, is to try to control all this. But these are illegitimate institutions now that are totally corrupt. They need to disintegrate. They need to disintegrate. 
No question about it. And again, a crisis is the only way to do it at this point. You could never fix this politically at this point. It's gotten too extreme. HarryDent.com. Harry Dent, I want to thank you so much for joining us. Uh, you have a lot of special deals on your site. Uh, tell folks where they go to get the book free. Yeah, again, uh, the book was just uh, updated, so this is a great time to get it. Um, all you do is pay shipping and handling, $4.95. You go to HarryDent.com. You can get the free book shipped to you, for again, for $4.95, and that's just our hard cost. We're not making a dime on that. And we've got a free daily newsletter to keep you updated. Also at HarryDent.com, you can see on this right uh, upper right-hand side, you just put your email in there, you're done, you're on. And it's a great newsletter. Last question. How long do you think it'll take till we see the disintegration of uh, a lot of this global system? I, I think that this broader crisis is going to last in the early part of next decade. We've said it from the beginning, but this winter season, we call it, starts in 2008 and it ends around 2022 or so. But I think we're going to see the worst for the financial markets literally in the next year or year and a half. So, so that's what you got to worry about first. After that, you got to worry about social unrest and all these other things. All right. Thanks for spending time with us. And congratulations on your predictions continuing to come true, even though it's not good news. Thank you.